Welcome to Engaging with Self-Ligation, a series of short modules where topics surrounding self-ligation will be discussed. My name is Dr. Lee Salvitro, and I have over 25 years of clinical experience and 15 years in self-ligation. Today's topic will be passive and active self-ligating systems. Joining me is Jennifer McWinney with over 17 years of clinical experience. Passive and active self-ligating systems. There's always been discussion around this, which is better, what's the difference? So let's take a look at it just from kind of a very simple standpoint. In active self-ligation, a flexible clip presses the arch wire against the bracket slot. So there's actually something physically pushing against that wire, holding it into the bracket slot. So the force produced in this type of system includes not only the deflection of the arch wire, because remember that deflected arch wire is what's going to produce a force, but there's also a force that is produced by this active clip. So when you're thinking about, you know, how much, when you're thinking about your force system, you have to think about both of those components. But the other thing too you need to consider is when you have an active clip pressing against the arch wire, it also produces friction or, or resistance in the system. Now in passive self-ligation, a rigid component such as a door is used to enclose uh, the wire and it creates a tube system. You know, sometimes people will ask me, well, it, it, like Ultra, is it different than, than Smart Clip? Smart Clip is also a passive system. It be, can be made active on demand, but particularly in your initial arch wires, it's very similar as far as being a passive system because there's an absence of an active component or clip pressing the arch wire and so it reduces the amount of friction or resistance in the system. So the resulting force produced on that tooth is that which is generated by the deflection of the arch wire and again, its engagement in the slot. And engagement in the slot is something that's very predictable when you're closing a door or you're sliding it in between um, using a smart clip bracket. So both of those are considered passive systems, but this is active on demand. Now, the thing you need to think about, too, when you're selecting your, your system, do you want active, do you want passive? And, you know, people can argue both sides, but what I like about a passive system is I can add the resistance when I want to. If I have an active system, that clip is always pushing against the wire from the beginning till the end. And you'll find throughout treatment, there's certain phases where you want passive self-ligation, and then there's certain parts where you're going to want stabilization you're going to want to be friction you know friction kind of has a bad name in orthodontics but sometimes it's your friend because you may want resistance or friction in one arch say if you're trying to correct a midline and you want to hold one midline like say like a maxillary midline if you add some resistance to that system which is very simple to do when we're using our ultra or or um, smart clip bracket because we can simply add ties so if we take a look at, at this example here, obviously in the beginning, self-ligation, passive self-ligation really has an advantage when it's coming to alignment and also then arch development. Why would we want to add resistance? A lot of times I'm thinking resistance in the lower arch during class two, because one of the side effects of any of our class two mechanics is proclination of lower incisors. And that's something we need to control if we want to optimize um, the treatment result or the effect on mandibular projection. So to control those incisors, yet we'll cinch that lower arch and cinch it very tightly. You can add some resistance by simply adding color ties. And we can add either chains or individual ties. And with the tie wings that are available, we can add that easily. So one of the things when you're looking in a passive system, I think you have to look and see, is there the opportunity to add resistance later as we proceed through treatment? And you know, here's our kind of an example where you know, obviously it's our initial bonding. Here we are as we're starting to level. And I think what's really fascinating too, from here to here, we didn't use any, any elastics. She didn't have any intraoral elastics. We just allowed that wire to, um, to express its deflection. But now when we got to this point, I really liked where her maxillary midline was on. I liked the incisor position. And then that's when we can add our, our ties, our color ties or our chain to add resistance where we want it. And, and I think too, this answers that question that Jennifer, you may hear sometimes when kids ask, you know, what about colors? When can I have that color? Yes. So then you just tell them it's coming, patiently wait. 
and in you know I think an example that we sometimes use once we get your smile right where we want your smile yeah. that's where we're going to lock it in with colors and you can have all the colors that you want or when we're starting to fix your bite we're going to have to use colors to help control teeth as we fix your bite so today's topic was passive and self-ligating systems there's other topics that are available as part of this series 